Hey everyone, welcome back for another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. In this one, I'll be explaining you how you can turn this 2D logo into a 3D, just like this one. So stay tuned in the next few minutes so you can find out. Okay, to get started, I'm in the Edit tab and I'm adding on my timeline my 2D logo image. In case somebody is asking where you can get this from, go in Google, type PNG at the end of the social media name, right click, save image as, and that's it. So I have it on my timeline, I'm selecting it and I'm going to the fusion tab. And then I'm left clicking on the wire in between media in and many out, so I disconnect them from each other. And then I'm getting image plane 3D and leaving it close to media in. And of course, next step is to connect this media into this image plane 3D. And then I'm highlighting this image plane 3D and I'm pressing number one on the keyboard. So I can have a closer look on the left side on my screen. Just like you can see now, I'm having a 2D flat image of the icon. And you can also do that by holding ALT and pressing the scroll button on your mouse. Then you press CTRL space and you can type duplicate because you want to add the duplicate 3D node which will be connected to that image 3D plane node. If it's not, feel free to connect it, just like you see now. Then I'm highlighting this duplicate 3D node and pressing number 2 on the keyboard so I can see it on the right side of the screen. And then while highlighted on the right side on the inspector you can see that we have two copies of it and when we change the parameters of something, for example from the translation, you can see that the second copy is moving. And the idea here is to make enough copies to make thickness and make it look like a 3D image. So now I'm gonna correct the values of copies and I'm gonna put number 10. So now we are having 10 copies and when I reduce the offset Z, in translation you can see that we are having a bit of effect that is looking like a 3D one, but when I move on the side we can see that there is some serious gap in between, so I am going to increase the values of the copies to 100 and also changing the values to minus 0.02 and that is just because 100 copies is looking way too wide. And in my case, I even gonna reduce the values by half of that to minus 0.001 because I want to make it look even a little bit thinner than this. And even with 100 copies and the minimalistic values of zero offset of the translation, we are still having some tiny bit of gaps in between these copies. But I'm gonna show you how you can improve that in the further in the video. So now our next goal is to animate that a little bit and changing the values of the rotations is not gonna do the job because it's gonna affect all the copies that you have just created and as you can see it becomes something messy. So once again I'm gonna hold control space and add a transform 3D. It is very important to use a transform 3D instead of just a transform. Then highlight this transform 3D node so we can see it on the left side by pressing number one on the keyboard. And then, while it's still highlighted, you can go on rotation on the inspector on the right side and see that when you change the values of something, it will change the whole image by itself, not all the copies, and they will all move as one. And when you did accomplish that, you can now make a basic keyframes using the rotations. And right now, I'm showing you a quick example of some of them. So, for example, go in the first frame, create a keyframe values of zero then go on the last frame and create the values of 200 or more. That way your logo will rotate and the viewer can actually see that it's 3D. Another cool and effective effect that you can do by using a keyframes in the rotations is using it as a spinner. I made a quick example like this one. So to accomplish this spinning effect you want to go in the beginning of the timeline on the first frame you want to select this keyframe on the Y settings on the rotation and they go at the last frames and change the values to 6, 7, 8, 100. Depends how fast you want it to spin. And then when you're ready with all these, you want to connect all these first four nodes, which are media in, image plane 3D, duplicate 3D and transform 3D into a merge node. But we're not gonna use just a merge node, we're gonna use a merge 3D node. So now we want to get all these nodes right here and put them on the merge 3D node like I said. You can get this merge 3D node from here, which is this one. Drag it and leave it next to the transform. Connect the transform to it, then select the merge 3D node and you want to add the render 3D node. Put it on the right side of it and connect the merge 3D node to the render 3D. Then highlight this render 3D node, go to the inspector and we're gonna change the rendering type because we want to render it a bit faster. 
and change the rendering type to OpenGL Renderer. And when you did that, you want to go to the Render 3D and finally connect it to the media out. And then you can put the final touch by going in the Edit tab, finding the glow in the Open Effects, drop it over your image, adjust the settings of your liking, and that's it. I also recommend you watching this video if you want to continue improving yourself. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.